I'll just yeah I'll, I'll go ahead and put the full amount on your credit card uh, bang the card and you'll get a receipt via email and I can mail you a hard copy if you want and then I'll go ahead and order the parts great super okay thanks I appreciate that well there you have it folks another customer uh, who just ordered a custom made good sell amp in this particular case it was a uh, uh, model 1958 with EL 34 tubes in it and we talked about color we talked about what kind of handle what kind of grill cloth uh, this particular one's going to be a sparkly vinyl uh, with a big fat brown leather handle on it um, uh, he's decided to leave the speaker choice up to me but so probably going to go with a WGS uh, veteran or maybe an ET90 but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and input this order and then uh, I'll, I'll walk you through the next step of the process all right here we go <laughs> so we've just received an order over the telephone and we're gonna update the uh, the board here mr. Duke here is getting a, uh, a model 1958 112 combo he's good to go and so the next step is is we call our vendors or when we check our shelves most of this stuff's already here but he wanted a particular color that wasn't in stock so we're going to order that and that's going to take about four weeks in the meantime everything else is you know that we need to complete this uh build is already um, here so we're going to get started on mr duke's chassis we don't have to have the cabinet here, obviously, um, the cabinets are made off-site. I know most of you are probably visualizing some huge factory with smokestacks and steam everywhere, you know, and sweaty guys with big hammers. But no, this is it right here. This is where all the metal work takes place. Um, and uh, I've, I've already taken a blank chassis, and I've already made the, the necessary holes using a, that's This is the heavy industry part right here, the drill press with a step bit and we make the proper tube holes using either that press this drill a series of step bits and then the chassis punch and this thing is the diameter of an octal tube socket so um, it's used to make the the tube holes and that's uh, this is the whole industry right here as far as getting your hands dirty and then from here we take this and this is ready to go to the to the uh, what we affectionately call the bench and if you hold it up to the light you can see all the holes in there and so we begin screwing parts into it we come over here to the bench and the bench is kind of sort of where everything happens um, this is a cluttered chaotic mess if anybody were to come in here at night and clean this while I was away whew, I can't even begin to tell you the problems that we would have but there is the way my brain works this is perfectly linear this makes perfect sense to me and what happens here at the bench the first thing we do is we put in the sockets uh, the large ones and the small ones uh, and there's a few other bits um, before we put in the transformers uh, terminal strips go in like this and that and so on and so forth and uh, this kind of gives you an idea of and this is all screwed together with these little 440 screws this face plate was actually ordered and engraved done for a band called switchfoot you've probably heard of them or you can google them or whatever and that's their corporate logo or their band logo and so I'm building a couple of these and after we get this stuff situated on the underside we flip it over and um, of course pretend like all that was screwed down um, and then we go with a power transformer a choke and uh, see there's a reverb transformer the choke actually goes right there we finish the chassis here on the bench uh, all the way to the point where it actually plays and makes sounds and uh, um, we're gonna go for now and when we come back I should have this chassis completed okay it's been a couple of days um, 
but uh, uh, I finally finished assembling uh, the chassis I was showing before, uh, the um, the face plate, uh, the chassis, and the loose parts. This is what it looks like completed. The face plate is held in place by the knobs and the pilot light. I had second thoughts about the green jewel. I'm going to go amber on this one. Input jacks, and if you look here, there she is. That is, honest to gosh, old school point-to-point -point wiring. My particular method is, is I use I use terminal strips, which I showed you a while ago. Uh, terminal strips, tube sockets. Um, there may be some last-minute wire dressing. Um, I've already tested it. Uh, for noise, I've already tested it for output, um, and this thing uh, tested 100% on the first try uh, over here on this equipment. And uh, that equipment being frequency uh, generator. Uh, this is actually will read an incoming frequency or it'll generate an outgoing frequency. In this case, says 999 on there. We're looking for a 1,000 hertz sine wave. Um, our output voltage is measured here. Our waveform is measured here. And with these numbers, we can calculate RMS watts at a given frequency, uh, at a given load, in this case, uh, 8 ohms. Um, and this tested right where it was supposed to. Where were we? Shortest distance between two. I'm a shortest distance between two points guy, and uh, if that means that you know the the wires look like this, well, so be it. You know, um, yeah, I'm I am hip to all the uh, low noise methods. I know what shouldn't be touching. I I can actually with my uh, well, I got to wear my glasses, but even so, I can I can actually see the individual electrons as they flow after 1500 amps. You see the electrons. You just you just do. And if you don't, then you need to you need to go get a job where you wear a suit or something like that. Um, but anyway, so this is the finished product. And next, we are going to uh, see if the cabinet has arrived yet. And with any luck at all, we'll have a cabinet, and uh, and uh, that that will be the final assembly uh, part of the process. So let's go check on that and see what's up.